constructs and ways that um, we can think about and communicate about some of these issues around water, for example, like the water footprint approach, um, that, that comment about almonds is sort of, um, uh, in, in the sector sort of uh, being kind of profiled as um, a scapegoat perhaps in, in sort of the California context in the, the ag industry. Um, you know, I think that that, that particular heuristic um, has sort of captivated attention over the last several years in the water space as a useful one and, and talking about how much water, for example, is embedded, if you will, virtual water in that product that ends up on a shelf. Now, the nuance, of course, is how you um, uh, communicate about that in a responsible way and in an accurate way, um, but, but things like, like that and, and, and new heuristics like that, and I just point to that as one example, can be a useful one in sort of making um, um, some of these uh, issues a little bit more tangible, tangible perhaps, for um, a layperson. Um, to understand and think about, you know, from a life cycle or water footprint perspective, in order to, to have that one almond, you know, now granted it might have been sort of morphed in a strange way in that particular case, but um, those types of constructs I think are, are coming forward increasingly uh, in the water space, and, and that's one example I'd give on that front that could be useful to use. I'll, I'll speak on behalf of the the industry that I've worked in for the last 38 years, the uh, water utility industry, and uh, I'd start by saying we probably have not been very good at the marketing side and at the co communication of, of uh, value and safety, and, and but maybe I'll also be so bold to say we're victims of our own success that 24-7 you do turn on a tap and get pure water, and so it, it becomes uh, taken for granted. I know the um, American Water Works Association, some of the trade agencies are trying to promote a value of water coalition. Um, maybe we'll make some progress. I have not been, have not been that outstanding at the, the marketing and the messaging. And it, and it gets tricky. You, you, um, you take a situation with a, with a scientist, you put a microphone in front of him and say, is our water safe? Well, a scientist can never say anything safe. It's not safe for me to step off this, uh, uh, to step off this podium in, in, in the scientific term, but you have to also talk in a, in a way that won't get you sued, but in a way that, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the average person understands. So I think there's, there's a need to, uh, to, to get the story out to be better at uh, talking about both the challenges and the opportunities. Yeah. Um ways could go on this, but um, obviously I think reporting of the water performance has come off quite a way. So it's better than it was even when I started doing reporting for Shell uh, a few years back. And, and reporting has got more required where it splits out the amount of, of uh, fresh water use and, and overall water use. Um, I think those stories are getting out, and, and as I've hinted at it before uh, today myself, that uh, Shell takes its use of water directly or indirectly very seriously indeed, much more than it was just a handful of years ago. Uh, and, but um, it's only by having data uh, at your disposal that you can do something about your performance. And, and I think that there that would allow me to recognize, for example, another um, uh, collaboration that's going on. It's not just Shell, but, that uh, many companies have worked with uh, WRI who are based here, World Resources Institute, who have the Aqueduct Alliance going, where they're doing a lot of uh, uh, geosensing, uh, uh, mapping out on a world level, looking at those uh, world water resources and put them in contact with other land uses, including oil and gas operations. 